Alright, welcome to my update for my channel, Striking Scorpion82. I've decided to put a whole load of videos together into one, so this one is quite long. I'm going to cover a whole load of stuff in this episode, so stay tuned and you'll find out what we've got in store for you on this video today. It's a big thank you to start off with, with all the subscriptions coming in, over well over 3,000 subscribers now on the channel, and uh, all of your comments coming in, uh, it's good to, I mean I had this vast collection before I started the YouTube uh, channel, and I thought to myself it would be good to share it with everyone, and then to make these battle reports and actually film. Always playing games of 40k over the years, and always thought to myself that it would be great if I could record them, uh, so that others could watch and I enjoy re-watching them myself and uh, James does as well but uh, we're happy to share them with you so you're able to see a piece of the action and enjoy some of the fun of the game. I always listen to your comments, take, try and take on board what you say and uh, encourage you just to look at the whole channel, there's all sorts of videos on there that you can have a look at. Now ahead of you there is a project that James has been working on, it's uh, Crew Guard Bandblade or Baneblade tank, super heavy tank. Uh, it's an exciting time now with a new Apocalypse book coming out. So I'm that's on the turntable. I'm gonna switch it on. So this is the, the uh, Bandblade that is made. Nice job. He's uh, painted it a few years ago, uh, and then recently he's gone over it again, revamped it and uh, it's come out pretty nice looking. Now I'm showing you that because we've got a battle report coming up. We haven't played it yet but it's in the planning and it's going to be an apocalypse game. 5,000 points aside, Imperial Guard versus another army. We're gonna, all will be revealed soon. Looking forward to the game. It's uh, quite a bit of planning going into it and we hope to share that battle report with you. Looking forward to it very much. Hopefully it'll be a very fun game to play with all of these larger scale units and the Bandblade is one of them and you're going to see some other ones as well and some quite rare ones that James has got There's a couple of new reports coming out uh, that we played on some new train, new desert train uh, you'll see that, a couple of games on there and uh, really James at the moment is what we would say 40 k out, he's had enough uh, he suffered a quite a few defeats and it's kind of depressed him and uh, so I'm trying to encourage him to get back and uh, he enjoys the painting but he just hates getting slaughtered on the battlefield it depresses him at times uh, and I've told him that being an Imperial player he has to get used to it but so what I'd say to you is if you can write a comment now on this video and uh, address it to James and James plays uh, Imperial Guard, Space Marines, he's the one in the battle reports that plays those armies and you'll see that quite recently he's been beaten quite badly and he's a bit depressed over the whole thing. Uh, I find it quite funny but uh, he takes it quite seriously but uh, if you can write a comment to him just encourage him and say come on James and get back in there again especially if you're an Imperial Guard player or a Space Marine player then uh, send a message to him uh, in the comments below and I'll get him to read them and then hopefully he'll be back out there doing battle reports again because I don't want to lose him, I don't want him to get beaten so much that he never plays again. He's had a couple of good wins. He tabled the Tau army that I had, completely wiped them out. Uh, more on that later as there's a new Tau project as well coming up. Uh, but just send an encouragement to James and that will be good. I shouldn't really be showing you all this stuff, but I will. Here's another project James has been working on. This is the Shadow Sword. Uh, now James is a bit of a genius when it comes to conversions. You'll see why. I just thought I'd show this one to you. Look what he's done inside. He's just made a few alterations 
and a little use of magnets and you'll see what I've taken this off the painting desk here just to show you uh, the geniusness of James and I'm trying to figure out how this one goes together he's put padding in here he's put he's put magnets inside so that goes in like that and then it does it so that you can make all the different configurations so this flips over I'm trying to figure out how it's done I think this goes in like this that's it that goes there in the barrel of the gun he's put a double magnet on there and a double magnet on there it's the very thin 0.5mm uh, thickness so they're very nice thin ones to fit in and yeah look at that he's done it so that, that just clicks in I think that's clever and that just shows you what James is like he's quite a genius when it comes to these things he's magnetised the bottoms of these so they just click on and this bit I think he's done it so it goes in there yeah and he's even done panels. It's all a case of getting this right here. Yeah, panel there. And panel there. And that's that is clever. It looks solid, but that's all the parts put together. It's a good job. And I think he's done it that way. So that if this all comes off, let's just take everything off here. I think he flips that over, like that, and that becomes the back platform. Then this goes on the front. Oops. This goes on the front here. Yeah. It's a good fit. And then he's made an attachment here so that this should go on, which it does. And I'm guessing that goes there, over the top. Yes, that's fine, those two go on there, and then he's made the engine compartment loose, so that goes on there, and then the two side guys, maybe this was, this. there you go, that goes like that, and that goes like that, so he's got two options there, that he's able to do on the one vehicle, I think that's clever, he's always doing that with his figures, he tries to get the maximum number of combinations, uh, for his vehicle and he's, and he's done it here on these so these two will feature he's got 5,000 points to spend I'm sure he's going to feature both of these and he's got a couple of others as well some very exciting ones uh, and then also the, the army that he's going to be fighting against will be quite impressive as well so look out for that game I hope to film that one quite soon and then get that loaded up for you our first YouTube apocalypse battle all the armies will be painted to the usual standards as you've seen before. Right, talk about the, the Wraith Knights, the latest part of my old army. Really, you're seeing my old army evolve with the new codex, gradually uh, switching over to the new style of play and some of the new units. Some of you have been asking about magnetizing on it. So that's the base of the figure, and then underneath there, these are squares of lead, flat lead that's thin enough so that it doesn't stick out on the bottom of the base. Those were stuck in there with super glue and then I mixed up a resin to fill that and you could just use super glue and leave them there but I filled in a resin block here as well and that's made the whole thing solid. That is a nice weight on there that's to stop that Wraith Knight from falling over. And then I just modelled the base here just with some odd bits and stones and sand as parts from Tyranids there, Imperial Guard bits just to build the whole thing up to make it a nice feature on there and the whole thing's solid and stuck down and then inside here there is a flat magnet it looks like a 12 millimeter wide by two or three millimeter deep that one it's a nice flat one I call it I call it a turret magnet it's good for turrets stick that on there I wanted a nice strong magnet for to hold the torso and then here is the torso for the figure there's a couple of magnets in here for the head don't need particularly strong ones drill a hole and then push magnets down inside. Three by two millimeter magnets there. So you drill down into the plastic and then insert the magnets down. And then the same in the top of the helmet there. And that just sits on. Doesn't need to be too strong to hold the head. But it gives a bit of movement there. 
and then the joints here are usually rounded. I've chopped them off flat and then put flat magnets on there. Um, you could use uh, one millimeter thickness and then the width of eight mil, ten mil. It's up to you. Just look at the figure. There's no fixed way of doing it. Just look at the figure, see the thickness that you think you need, and then buy the appropriate magnets to go with it. Here on the torso is a nice wide magnet. It's one of those twelve mil wide ones again. And that's again, I've cut off the rounded part, stuck a magnet on top, so that now that should just go in there, and that's quite strong. But that's strong enough to hold him tight, he doesn't slip around, but there's enough movement there if I want to adjust the figure. So you've got the head there and the torso sitting nicely. Now eventually that paint rubs away, there's not much you can do about it, but it, it's covered well. The sculpting is that you can't see that join anyway. That's where you want your magnets, is in areas that are not going to be seen. And then for the arm, simply it was a case of, it was already hollowed out there, uh, there was already a void there, so I just filled them with magnets positioned at the angle that I wanted and then injected in super glue to hold them in place and that's worked out well quite strong again you want them strong enough so that the grip's strong so that the, the arm doesn't just flop down if it's a weak magnet you want quite a strong magnet to hold it there and I'm able to get quite an angle now I can't adjust like this with the magnets so choose the angle wisely how you want it done and you're able to get that on there and that one holds that one nicely in place and then on the other side here you can see the magnet just there so I've been playing with the sun cannon so for this one there's the arm there's the fixed magnet inside like this and then I have inserted a magnet cut off the end and put a magnet actually I hollowed out here and inserted some magnets down inside. Now if you think a magnet's weak then drill down deeper and insert as many magnets as you need. There might be two or three magnets in there pushed down and again use the super glue to join them together and then push them right down and deep because the more magnets you have the stronger uh, the connection will be. And again on the inside there and then they're attracted together. Quite strong, I may have made that a bit stronger but it's enough to hold it in place for a game it won't be disturbed and if it is if it does go wonky, it's able to adjust and squeeze in there again. Uh, if you make a mistake, drill them out and just remagnetize with something stronger. But that one goes on there, and then I wanted the uh, I wanted the magnets in here so I could attach the scatter laser option on the same arm. It made sense to have it on the same arm for twin link shooting. So that goes on there. That's probably the worst join that I've done. There's a double magnet there and a double magnet there and it's strong enough to hold it in place so it will do for gaming purposes but it's quite very tricky that one to get that straightened up you can buy magnets that are a bar shape that's a one long magnet that might be better but it's a double uh, disc magnet in there to hold it in place that will do for gaming purposes it's all right and you can always change it later it was this arm that i held it's not the full strictly speaking it's not totally the sun can layout I've gone for that option so I can replace it with the standard star heavy star or heavy rave cannon option uh, but that's easily changed I hardly need to do anything to take that out and swap it over and that's good so sun cannon just hold it put it on there and then we attach it on um, strong enough again as I said to, to hold it in place and I'm able to get all the way up which is cool and then I'm able to go all the way down as well so real variety of poses that I can do with the figure which I think was important for something this big there's lots of different good poses you can do and once you've all glued it in place you're then restricted to that one pose but if you magnetize then you can do all your different ones if you're shooting at something a long distance then you know, you can change it during the game uh, to add variety, it's quite cool. So there he is, the Wraith Knight, that's how I magnetised him. Really it's just a case of figuring it out for yourself, there's no fixed way of doing it. Just buy the appropriate magnets that you need and then uh, experiment on your figures. And if you make a mistake then just drill it out and start again. So there's the Wraith Knight and you've 
you'll see him in some of the bat reports the latest bat reports been doing he's been performing really well and the the quality of the sculpt is excellent one of the one of my favorite games workshop uh, kits at the moment really really nice looking and he goes so well with the Eldar Force Right now update on painting tutorials a lot of you have been asking me can you show us a painting tutorial of how to paint the Eldar the problem is that I have is that my collections pretty much finished but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other component part which is the right hand arm the other attachment there uh, the other option for the arm and then the sword and there's another part there I'm going to take those and I'm going to do a, a painting tutorial with those parts because on there is all the different parts that I use on that Eldar, that turquoise Eldar uh, craft world painting scheme. If you learn how to paint these bits you'll be able to apply that same technique to the rest of the uh, Eldar army. So that's how I'm going to do the painting tutorial. Look out for that one and uh, I hope to get that one loaded up at some point. Um, but if you watch that you'll know exactly how to paint uh, the rest of the Eldar. And if You can then take that technique on my channel I have loaded up showcase videos and that's videos of the units on the turntable so you've got a 360 degree view of them and you can watch them and then you'll know exactly how to paint each Eldar unit. Really handy if you're in the process of painting your Eldar army. There's some of the older videos that I've loaded up they're in full HD and you can there's stills on there and also uh, you can actually watch them on the turntable as they go around so you'll be able to know how to paint the figure at 360 degrees. So watch those and you'll learn how to paint the Eldar and also I've done that for the Necrons, they're all loaded up as well, showcase videos and also the Blood Angels are on there as well. So if you're wondering how any of my units are painted for those armies then check out my channel and you'll be able to find those showcase videos and you'll have a nice view of each of those figures and units. Right, another important update. Space Hulk has not been abandoned, that project is still going on. I've made very good progress painting the figures as I said that I would. Uh, that is a sneak peek there of two of the figures, Sergeant Lorenzo and one of the other Terminators as well. They've come out really well and the good news is that I am making a painting, painting tutorial for them. This guy's half finished. I've been filming how to paint him, exactly how to paint him. So if you like the start of these, if you like the way that these guys have come out, then look forward to that painting tutorial. I'm going to show you exactly how to paint Blood Angels and I'll be using the Terminators from this Space Hulk game. Uh, the Tyranids come along very well for it as well. So once all that's painted and done, then we'll be able to do uh, tutorials on how to play and battle reports for that as well Space Hulk and we've been playing it James and I have already been playing it, and it is an excellent game great fun to play and look forward to uh, doing those battle reports as well so painting tutorial for Blood Angels on the way it's halfway done hope to finish that off very soon and get that loaded up on the channel as well okay subject is revamping an army. Uh, Games Workshop figures aren't the cheapest to buy and it can cost you quite a lot to put an army together. So what I've done recently, uh, the new Tau Codex has come out and uh, my army was soundly beaten by James. Check out that episode, it was quite humiliating. Completely tabled, he wiped me out. So I thought it was a good time to take the Tau Army, have a rethink with them and also just to inject a bit more life into them. That's the original colour scheme. It's like a two-tone grey there, whites on the missiles and then like a blue colour for the some of the weaponry. It was a nice scheme, it was the first time really that I painted uh, for Warhammer 40,000. What I've done recently is because I think they're quite dull looking, I wanted to get a second colour introduced into that scheme and I also wanted to, uh, to make them look a bit more battle hardened. There's no chipping on there, there's no rusting at all on those and some of the other colour schemes that I'd seen on the internet 
look, the towel looked really nice when they looked uh, battle hardened and had been on campaign. So I'd had a rethink with the towel. And the colour that I'd wanted to introduce, and a colour that I haven't really used in any of my other armies, is the colour orange. And orange, white, and grey is a nice colour combination. So I've been working on the towel army. But on the subject of revamping, I think it's a really good idea. Think of an army that you have that perhaps has been hidden away. Get it out, dust it down. I use a stiff brush and I've dusted it down. There's quite a lot of dust on them. They've been using them for quite a few years now. And then any repairs that need to be done. And then get the new codex for whatever army it is. In this case it was the towel. And then go over them and revamp them, repaint them. Because the figures have been bought, you don't have to pay out for that. And they're partly already been painted. They're already constructed, so you're gonna save yourself a lot of time. So what I've done is I've taken my old army, I've taken out the elements that I like to uh, to include them in my force, and then really I've only got a handful of new units to buy to bring that up to the new Tau Codex level. So there's a Fire Warrior, and there is one of the XV8 Crisis teams. What I'm going to show you now, because I've actually finished quite a few of them, is I'm just going to move those over, and it's a sneak peek really of the new force so there's a fire warrior and that orange what a lift that is compared to the old style you can see that there that color introduced and there's a bit more towel markings to make him look better I've got it round on the pulse rifle there on the shoulder pad and then right across splashed across the top of the helmet and I think that looks great so there's a fire warrior there's a second one and when they're together they look really nice crew I'm not changing the crew are going to stay the same uh, and then for pathfinders I'm not going to get the plastic ones I'm going to stick with my old lead ones I think this guy's come out really well I did an experiment on him to see how he looked it looks good because I'm not really going to use any upgrades I don't think in my force for the pathfinders it'll just be the guys of marker light so there's no need for me to buy that new box that's the new tower and then the crisis team crisis suit has actually come out quite nice as well there he is just with that second color introduced now the trick is not to put too much on if he was covered in orange it wouldn't look right and it's just a spot color added in on the key parts another trick was to put the colors on where they are a priority so the head is a priority the shoulders and the torso so it's, you'll see that he's darker at the bottom and then these key colors come in around the top across in the center and at the head and you're drawing the eye and putting the attention on that area that you want. I've kept the blue for the weaponry so really it was a case of it gave him a shade uh, orc hide shade, just a brown shade over the whole thing uh, added some more grey added the orange, now orange the pigment's very low in colouring so what I did was I painted bleach bone first, a cream colour and then painted the orange over the top that gave me a nice solid bright orange colour and then the washes over the top of all of those Rewashed over the white, added some more white on as well, and then repainted the base colours, and then just chipped the whole thing with chainmail. You see that chipping over there, just on the edges where you think it would be chipped in real life, and that's just aged him a bit, just made him more metallic looking, more tough looking, I think. I think that's come out better. Uh, avoided putting any washes or disturbing this blue. I haven't really touched it; it's just remained the same. But that revamping has uh, brought life back into that force and has changed that Tau army now. And I'm really looking forward to getting that finished. I've done Fire Warriors. I don't want to give you too much of a clue about my force, but it will be classic Tau style. All my favorite Tau units are going to be in that 1850 point army, including some of my favorite uh, new releases as well. And I hope to get that army finished and battle reports done around about December time, which isn't too far away. Uh, I wish I could get it done earlier, but there's quite a lot of work to do. So I'm revamping my stuff, and then buying the new releases. My army's done, I'm happy with it. And then we're gonna uh, look forward to playing games with that. So comment, what do you think on that? This one, as opposed to this one. I know for a fact that some people are gonna say, well, I still like the old color scheme, but I think that revamp's come out really well nice bright colour for the towel and that weathering and that chipping effect the final part that I did was 
take some Griffone Serpy, the lighter brown wash, and just dab it here and there, uh, just to give that brownie effect, and that helps to make it look more weathered and on campaign. It's a new model towel army. The hardened veterans have been on campaign, and hopefully they'll look a bit more intimidating on the battlefield. And that orange throughout the force will key them in together to unite the force, because they are going to be a very united race. So that orange, I think, will look uh, look good on the battlefield. So that's the new tower army. Look out for them making an appearance again in the future. Uh, I want to mention to you some other videos coming up. Now the focus of the channel, uh, I think mainly will be battle reports. That's what people are enjoying. And I hope to make many more. And I really enjoy making them as well, so it's good all round. So there will be more battle reports, plenty planned. Uh, there's lots of game combinations we haven't done yet. Really, I've only just started. It's just the start of this channel. Uh, so battle reports. I want to do painting tutorials as well. I think they're helpful to people. So battle reports mainly. Uh, but there are other aspects to the hobby, such as these videos here, showcase videos. Um, and then... I am into military history, historical stuff as well, so I do have a large collections of historical figures and war games, uh, and I'd like to show those to you at some point. I'm just getting going with these battle reports, but really, the depth of this channel, we've, we've hardly started it. It's still uh, just in the shallows at the moment. There's a lot more depth and things to come. Exciting ones, very big into World War II, 20mm World War II war gaming, uh, Napoleonic ships, uh, naval warfare, and some great, great games uh, to show you there. And I hope to be able to uh, do demo games and show you some of those battle reports as well. Something different for you. Not just 40k out there, there's plenty of other stuff. But again, the same kind of quality productions as you've seen already. Now, on the note of historical, I've recently been to what's called the Military Odyssey. That's in the Kent County showground, the southeast of England. Been there and have filmed some of the reenactments going on. It's probably the largest reenactment display in the whole of Europe. excellent day out and what I've done there is I've filmed some of the battles and I've also been around interviewing some of the reenactors there so look out for those videos coming up you're actually going to see interviews I interviewed a guy from who was a uh, reenactment group for the Vietnam War so the US Marines and what I do is I ask them to run through all of their kit so you're going to see up close and that these people really know what they're talking about and you're going to be able to see them run through all of their kit and weapons and tactics and so on very very interesting videos very excited about those and what can help you even from a wargaming aspect is if they talk about tactics or just talk about their kit and also uh, color schemes as well often I find that influence for color schemes can be from real history and also from nature as well if you look at nature documentaries and some of the combinations of colors out there in the natural world can be a great inspiration for you to apply those to your painting schemes. But look out for those reenactment videos, those interviews, really exciting ones on there. I won't give too much away, but have an open mind, watch those. They're well worth a watch as you see them come up on the channel. And of course, I uh, hope to keep the battle reports coming in as well.
At this range, he's got little chance of his musketeers being attacked while they're unloaded. Ready to come forward and engage the enemy. 